Hello everyone, Nadlaf here. Today we're going to be making an RPG looking game and I'll show you exactly what I mean, but essentially I'm going to be doing the point and click adventure and then I'm going to be making like interactions with objects using global signal. So we're doing two things and I'm going to like combine them into like a bigger project so like we put games into context because I realize I don't do that in my tutorials and other, other people don't, but who cares, let's get straight into it. So I'm just going to go to my assets or I'm going to make an assets folder here. So assets and I'm going to download or um, move over my one bit one bit Kenny pack and I'm just going to double click on my one bit Kenny pack here and I'm just going to look for the uh, tile sheet which is all of them and I'm going to go for the color transparent packed which is just a fancy way of saying that it has colors as you can see colors it's all packed nicely together no gaps and then it is a transparent background that's about it and if I just go over here to my 2d scene I'm going to make the world. So I'm just going to make a simple world here. And I'm going to save my scene. So I'm going to save it in a source folder. Save. What we can see is if I just drag in my world or my sprite, it's very blurry. Like the sky is blurry. So what we have to do is we have to go to our project settings and we have to actually go to our rendering textures and we have to click nearest to make sure it's a very nice crisp pixely look. So next I'm going to go over here and make my player, which is the point and click system. So character body, and I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to do a sprite and I'm going to also click back on my character body and con control A to add a uh, collision shape, collision shape. And once I've added my collision shape, I'm going to make it a circle and I'm going to go over there to my sprite and I'm just going to drag over my uh, sprite 2D and I'm going to click a region. Why? Because I want to have a region of the sprite, as you can see. Um, as you, actually, you couldn't see there, but I want a region. Which region do I want? Oh, well, I think I would like to do pixel snap. Oh, grid snap. Okay, grid snap. I want to do my player as, uh, let's go octopus. No, let's go cyclops. Cyclops. Okay, cool. Now I have my player. My player is kind of small though, but that's fine. I can just enlarge my player, holding control shift alt to make sure it's all one big blob. And yeah, now I have my player. That's pretty cool, but I'm going to, before I click Control S to save, I'm going to rename it to player. I'm just going to save it as is right there in the scene. I'm going to instantiate my player. So now um, if I run the scene, so I click F5 to run. If I run it, um, nothing happens, right? And that's because nothing is programmed. So I'm going to make the simple point and click script, which is very simple. All we really need to do is var pause to go to. Okay, pause to go to is going to be some vector 2. Uh, we don't know what type. And then we're going to do a, a func underscore... Uh, input so if there's an input if event dot is action uh, pressed we're going to do an event called click which we'll make in a second we're basically going to say we're going to say pause to go to equal uh, get underscore global mouse position and that's because we want to just have it so that when we click on some place on the screen if we click we want the player to go to that area and if we go to our input map and we just type in if we type in click we can define the click event and we can click the left mouse button what i just did there was i said to Godot if I click on the left mouse button, fire this event. It could just it could have been named Jibba Jabba. Jibba Jabba. And when I click fire Jibba Jabba, and then in our event um, loop here, or in, a, in our event function, which runs every time there is some keyboard interaction, controller interaction, mouse interaction, if the event is just action pressed, or if um, Jibba Jabba just happened, then I want pause to go to equal get underscore global mouse position. And essentially, if... Um, you know, if there's a pause to go to, or if pause to go to is updated, then what I want to do is var velocity equal uh, pause to go to minus the global position, and this global position is self dot global position, and that essentially says, you know, in the world wherever I clicked, wherever I clicked, uh, make a line. So, so let's say I clicked right here. Um, I essentially want to make a vector or a line to that point, and I essentially just want to move my character. So if I run the scene. Um, a few bad things might happen, but, you know, okay, nothing seems to be happening. Well, if we go back and take a look, well, velocity, well, we're, what are we doing with the velocity? We're not doing anything with the velocity, so we have to set our velocity equal to vel. And then, again, nothing's going to happen. Why? Because we have to move and slide, move and slide our player. So now, okay, interesting. Uh, we have it slowing down. That's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool, but you know, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of weird. It just eventually stops. Um, that's not what I want exactly. What I would rather have is 
pause to go to a vault. It would be nice if it was normalized or at least clamped to a certain uh, velocity. So the lowest value we could have is zero and the highest value we could have is vector two, 100, 100, which essentially this line here, it says, um, actually, you know what, let's split it up because I want this to be super simple. So velocity is actually gonna be velocity dot clamped. And we're gonna clamp it, or we're going to min limit it to a vector two dot zero. So that's the smallest vector we can have, which is no movement. And then the biggest vector we can have is let's say vector two, 100, 100. And this effectively means that the speed is, you know, 100 for all intents and purposes. Technically, it's like 1.4, well, 1, 140, but that's because of the Pythagorean theorem. But anyway, this is how we can make sure our velocity doesn't like go super fast. Or, yeah, we can now, you know, uh, it's more linear and then it slows to a stop. So we have our simple person moving around, but you can see that I can't now, I cannot go back. Why is that the case? Well, it's because we set the minimum to vector 2.0, and that vector that we're going towards is actually um, um, a negative vector. So that's actually my mistake. It should be negative 100 and 100. Uh, and now we have a clamped version or a clamp speed. And you can see that uh, it's kind of weird now. Oh, that's because I have to put another 100 there or, or negative there. So now we can have the person moving around all simple, nice and easy.